Chapter 7, Jaguar. <clears throat> it was Bill Brewster. Buzz had somehow been blown free of the wreckage. His leg was badly broken, but he didn't have any burns. Doc's right hand and forearm were covered with ugly blisters. I was fine. Flanna and I tried to make Doc and Buzz comfortable while we waited for the ambulance and fire department, which seemed to take forever. Flanna, got, Flanna was very calm. She helped me get Doc into the air-conditioned kitchen and convinced him to lie down on the bunk and rest. Then we went back outside with a stretcher they had for moving tranquilized jaguars. We got Buzz onto it and carried him inside. Flanna told me to make Buzz as comfortable as I could. She went to work on Doc's hand and forearm, smearing on a, sl a slab of her own concoction. When she was done, she cut off Buzz's pant leg. The flesh was terribly discolored, and the leg was twisted at an unnatural angle. Buzz lifted his head to assess the damage. Looks like I busted a strut, he said, then passed out. I'm afraid I don't have anything in my bag of tricks for a broken leg, Flana said. We'll just have to wait for the ambulance. Only when she had done everything she could did Flana break down. She held Doc's good hand and cried without making a sound. The ambulance pulled, out, pulled up outside. I ran out and told the driver where we were. He and his partner brought a stretcher in. Flana barked something at them in Portuguese, and one of them shrugged his shoulders. They only sent one ambulance, she said. We'll take your father in the truck, if I can figure out how to get it started. I can show you, Doc said weakly, and added, Jake, you better stay here. I was about to protest when Flanna put a hand on my shoulder. He's right, Jake. We can't leave our equipment unattended. Every thief in Manius will know we're at the hospital. Fine, I said. I'll call you from the hospital and tell you how things are going, Flanna said. Buzz was placed on the stretcher and rolled out the door. Flanna and I helped Doc out of his bunk. He was in a lot of pain. Flanna managed to get the truck, the truck started as I helped Doc into the passenger seat. I'll be fine, he said. I watched them drive away. The boat was still burning. Bill Brewster's body was hidden behind a veil of black smoke. I couldn't believe he was dead. Suddenly, a man walked out from the side of the warehouse. Can I help you, I asked. He stared at the burning boat. Looks like you're the one that needs help. He sounded like an American. What are you doing here? I saw the smoke. He had silver gray hair cut so short it looked as if he had been painted on his head. His eyes were pale blue and his face was tanned and wrinkled as if he spent many years in the tropics. He wore black jeans, white tennis shoes, and a starched white shirt. I guessed him to be in his late fifties, but he was in very good shape. What happened here? He asked. Who are you? My name is Jay Silver, but you can call me Silver. You must be Doc's son. Jake, I said. You know my father? Not very well, he admitted. We only met once. So what happened? I had no idea what happened, and I wasn't in the mood to have a conversation with a complete stranger. I was worried about Doc's injuries, and his best friend had just been killed. Who was this guy? The boat blew up, I said. Bill Brewster's dead. And your dad? His hand got burned. And the tall guy? I forget his name. Buzz, I said. His leg's broken. They're at the hospital. You have no idea how this happened? I shook my head. Bill and Buzz were going to do some work on the fuel system, but they didn't make it to the boat before it blew up. Did they work on the fuel system earlier? I don't know. They were just working on the, the engine yesterday. Why? Things don't just blow up on their own. I'm just curious about how it happened. A fire engine pulled up, followed by two police cars and a van. The firefighters got out of their truck, took one look at the fire, then got back in their truck and just sat there. What are they doing? The cab's air conditioned, Silver said. I imagine they'll just wait for the boat to burn itself out. It's too late to save it. 
A uniformed policeman got out of one of the cars and came over to us. He nodded at Silver as if he knew him, then started jabbering at me. I'll take care of this, Silver said, and launched into an explanation in what sounded like perfect Portuguese. The policeman looked the policeman took a pad out and jotted down some notes. When Silver was finished, the officer asked him a few questions, then saluted and walked back to his car. Now it was my turn to ask what was going on. They're going to the hospital and talk to your father. One of the police cars drove away. What about Bill? It didn't seem right to leave him lying there. The firefighters will take care of him as soon as the fire burns itself out. I heard the phone ringing and ran inside to pick it up. It was Flana. She said they were wrapping my father's hand and putting a cast on Buzz's leg. She thought they would be back at the warehouse late that afternoon. I thanked her and went back outside. Silver was gone. I couldn't look when the firefighters zipped and what, I'm sorry. I couldn't look when the firefighter zipped what remained of Bill's body into the black plastic bag and put it into the van. I'd known Bill Brewster my whole life. He and Doc had gone to school together, had worked as curators for the New York Zoology Society, and had been field partners all over the world. Now, he was gone. I watched as the police poked around the wreckage for a few minutes, then left without trying to ask me any more questions questions. The fire engine and van drove away right behind them. I walked down to the water. There was nothing left of the boat except charred wood. The dock was gone as well. Bill's death was going to be very hard on dock. There was no one closer to my father than Bill Brewster. I had no idea what was going to happen to the expedition now that he was gone. And then there was Doc's and Buzz's injuries. The only way I could help Doc was to do whatever he wanted me to do. If this meant going back to the home, going to summer school, or even to boarding school, I would do it. And I'd try to do it cheerfully, without complaint. I pulled the back door wide open so the bats could come home if they wanted to. Flana didn't drive up in the old truck until late that evening. Doc wore a sling, and his arm was wrapped in thick bandages. Buzz's leg was in a cast and he had been given a pair of crutches to get around on. I helped Flana get inside, them inside. They immediately lay down on their cots without a word and went to sleep. They're on pain medication, Flana said tiredly. Are you all right? I guess, I said, but I wasn't sure. Did the police figure out what happened? They think it was an accident, something to do with a fuel leak. We're lucky it didn't happen when we were on our way up river. Not lucky for Bill, I thought. I think I'll go to bed too, Flana said wearily. Good night, Jake. Good night.